Amnesty International Nigeria has released its latest report titled Time to End Impunity, Tasha and Other Violations by the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. The report documents cases of human rights violations, including extrajudicial executions, toucha, inhumane and degrading treatment, rape and ill treatment by the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, between January 2017 and May 2020. It also reveals a pattern of abuse of power by SARS officials and the consistent failure by the Nigerian authorities to bring perpetrators to justice. The report also reveals that detainees in SARS custody have been subjected to a variety of methods of torture, including hanging, mock execution, beatings, among others. To talk about this, we have joining us the country director, Amnesty International Nigeria, Osai Ojibo. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Tell us what your major findings are in this report against the actions and conduct of SARS. What we discovered was that torture was systematically used as a tool to oppress, to intimidate, and to threaten suspects in their custody. It was also used as a means to extort money, which is really quite shocking when you consider that the real reason why SARS was set up as a specialized unit with specialized officers and training was to combat the crime of armed robbery. It's disturbing that it's now being used by some individuals and some officials as a means of making money and also as a tool of oppression against other people. Uh, the, the report um, highlighted that your organization documented 82 cases between January 2017 and May 2020. What is most worrying for you, seeing this obvious allowance of inhuman treatment uh, being perpetrated by men of SARS on innocent Nigerians? Well, I think what is really alarming is the number of um, young people that are targeted specifically by SARS. It's, and this goes beyond the normal um, structures that we see within the institution. Um, the young people are just picked up just because they are young, they are male, and they are between the ages of 18 and 30. And then journalists are targeted when they expose these abuses and when they try to seek justice for victims of crime. And that they've gone beyond what their mandate is, which is to protect life and property, and are actually now leading the, the, the criminal activities against people and extorting them of their money and taking people's lives. Because when people are tortured, you are exposed to all kinds of physical and mental trauma. And sadly, some people have lost their lives while being held on so-called charges by SARS. We really want to see a change um, in the way they operate and to see the reforms which has been clamored for by the public to actually take effect. Sadly, since the Anti-Torture Act was signed into law by President Buhari in 27, December 2017, the cases of torture by SARS operatives have not abated, and no single SARS officer who has been accused of committing these crimes have been brought to justice. This, this, this is a, a sad representation of what we don't want, obviously. but. Can you, would you rather describe this as a clear case of impunity if, like you said, there's been no arrest, there's no indication that these culprits that are, you know, perpetrating this act has not been prosecuted or arrested? Because they believe that nothing can happen to them. And in fact, this is a statement they say to, to victims or suspects when they get them. I will beat you. I will do whatever I can to you, and nothing will happen. So this lack of accountability is what is fueling the rising incidents of reports that we get. And the 82 cases that we kind of highlighted are just scratching the surface in the country. It's just an attempt by Amnesty International to show the different methods, the different styles through which 
um, torture and other ill treatment is being used by this specialized harm. For many years, there's been a clamor for impunity to end. And we're seeing that it is not abating. And that is why we are rising, we're joining our voices with others to say the time is now. All right. The president, the federal government needs to put to effect the recommendations from the National Human Rights Commission's um, findings in the presidential panel that was shared last year. All right, Asai, thank you very much for uh, giving us an insight to that report.